all right and welcome back everyone i hope you guys had a wonderful thanksgiving i most certainly had the best thanksgiving ever i tried a bunch of stuff whether it be uh the stuffings turkey ham what have you but i'm blessed and another thing i would say thank you all for supporting my channels especially after a three-year layoff uh, I would say the channels are doing very good and continued success um, just in general but today we have a lot to talk about a lot of things happening a lot of articles so let's start out with Patty Pimlet so apparently he doesn't buy into Jake Paul's boxing boxing success after watching recent footage of um, Jake Paul boxing and Anderson uh, Silva and uh, and to be real in my opinion I think Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva was real but really the f the fights with him and Tywin Woodley I personally think wasn't real but this is what Patty said when he was uh, on pub talk they are a gang of idiots I give Jake Paul his due now he's training that much he's pro he probably could beat some professional boxers he got unlimited funds and he hasn't got to do anything else. He hasn't got to go and do a job at all. He's got, all he's got to do is box. And he, he gets the best coaches in, the best nutritionists and stuff like that. Hmm. And then he, he goes on and comments, I don't think the Tyron Woodley knockout was fixed because when you get knocked out like that and you land your first you, and you land face first if you're not unconscious you're going to put arms out you can't help it that's a human reaction but I seen an angle of, of a punch he hit Anderson Silva with the other day when he sat down and he didn't even hit him now he speaks on potential fight against Logan Paul and he states it's an easy payday. I don't want to box any of them. I don't care about them. He does go on to say, I do this properly and professionally against some of the best fighters in the world, but any of them want to pay me millions of pounds to beat them up, I'll do it. So, in my opinion, I do think that the if, if Patty were to fight the Paul brothers it would tarnish his reputation or his professional you know combat sports reputation I think he's on the right path as far as staying with the UFC or going through that route instead of messing around with the Paul brothers I think that's definitely the best option for his career right now especially coming in the game um, as strong as he has um, and I, I think if he keeps going he'll he'll be a very very successful fighter one day potentially on Conor, Conor McGregor's level the next article or not the next article um, Jake Paul does respond to Patty on let me see this might be Twitter. Yes, yeah, Twitter. And he says, Dear Patty, you claim my fighters are rigged. Stop calling the GOAT Anderson Silva a criminal, a criminal and come spar me. You win. I give you one million. I win. You join the UFA. But I'm with, I'm with Patty. I wouldn't fall into Jake Paul's trap of, you know, fighting him. Because I just feel it would 
ruin his reputation if he doesn't win. So, yeah. The next story I have, USADA reveals Conor McGregor needs to be in the testing pool for six months before he can be cleared to fight. So apparently, Conor McGregor stated on Twitter, I'm clear for testing in February. I will complete my two tests per USADA and we are booking the fight. And then USADA came back separately and responded to ESPN in an email and they, and they stated McGregor is not enrolled in our testing pool and he would have to be in for six months unless an exception is granted. Which would you think would be applicable? So they, they wouldn't think it would be applicable for him to get an exception. Conor McGregor meanwhile was the also the only athlete on the UFC's active roster prior to August 1st, 2022, who had, who had not been tested. According to a report done by TSN, and yet he ranked 14th at lightweight. And when a fighter leaves USADA, they are also removed from the rankings, which isn't the case here. And, all, and we all know Conor McGregor's last win was with Donald Cerrone coming off the loss to Khabib. And I feel ever since Khabib, he's just been on a downward spiral. I, I, I don't even give, I feel like Donald Cerrone was on his way out when he fought Conor McGregor. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully Conor McGregor picks up a win sooner or later. So my next article, Haspula, the internet sensation has got into a scuffle with Henry Cejudo, the triple champ, triple C. Uh, I'll probably put the video in here. As of now, Haspula, his UFC debate hasn't been set, but is expected to be announced by the end of the year. Meanwhile, Henry Cejudo's return against Sterling is expected for next spring. Interesting. Yeah, I'm very curious what Hasbulla is going to do or where he's gonna take his career. I think he's very talented to garner, garner so much attention so soon. And I know whoever is managing Hasbulla is making a crap ton of money. That's for sure. The next article I have, apparently Chell Sonnen admits he would put his money on John Jones in any form of combat sports. He will bet on John Jones in anything. So speaking on Chell Sonnen's YouTube channel, he states, I would bet on John Jones in anything. I might lose my money, but I would bet on John Jones in anything. I'm going to discuss you guys, but I don't say this with any exaggeration. If John Jones was entering Abu Dhabi tomorrow and Gordon Ryan was in the, in the bracket, I'll bet on John Jones. Roast away, go ahead. If John Jones is going to go over to heavyweight boxing and take on Tyson Fury, I'm going to bet on John Jones. Now, this is why this is where I disagree with Mr. Sonnen just a bit. I still, if John Jones were to go head to head with Tyson Fury, I would have Tyson Fury on this one. Now, when it comes to Curtis Blades, I have John Jones. So, when it comes to MMA, I have John Jones, but when it comes to boxing, I have Tyson Fury. The next article I have, Jerry explains why he's still grateful despite vacating title and withdrawing from UFC. And he does state a lot here. So via Twitter, he states, grateful there are no obstacles, just an opportunity to see the same path from a different angle and be stronger and more human. 
once you accept the path of the warrior or simply be absolutely honest to yourself then you know deep inside what is false and what is true your path is a title I became the UFC champion five months ago and the current situation does not change my inner feeling of being a champion that is the feeling and the reason why I started MMA to be champion of the best and to be the best of the best this is my infinite motivation and spirit consciousness and will to act I can't move it even if I force it it's like gravity or law of physics so if someone wins the light heavyweight UFC title and proves they are the best now while I rest I will be honored to see that performance and then get ready to show who is the rightful champion of this division and much more pound for pound I thank my fans for their support and trust this is the beginning of something greater I love you so this is very respectable um, he's just focusing on recovering from his injury Dana White stated that it's very serious and I, I, I believe him but in my mind Jerry is the champion and when he comes back after he recovers it would be nice to see him defend his belt all right the next story I have Khabib explains why he would never betray retirement promise to his mother so he is 29 and 0 in MMA and let me see the last time he fought was in October 2020 defeating Justin Gaethje let me see so speaking to a UC commentator John it was my last fight ain't no way I'm going to come here without my father he continues on it was the first time after what happened with my father when the UFC called me about fighting Justin I talked to my mother for three days she didn't want me to fight without father but I promised her it was going to be my last fight and I, if I give my word I have to follow this it was my last fight here hmm because I because of, of I finished my career because I promised my mother that's why this one question discussion between me and my mother became very famous but we had a lot of different things people don't know about this not only this promise I follow not only this promise to my mother I follow everything about my mother you can have friends or kids whatever you can have whatever you want but you are never going to have one mother have one more mother you have only one mother for me it's everything for for me it's everything I love my mother because of millions and millions of reasons I know even in Dagestan this is not about Dagestan but I know a lot of people who have bad relationships with parents I really really don't understand this how can people have bad relationships with parents yes mother for me it's everything even now she is still with me like living with me in the same house I'll treat her like a queen and for me I respect this from Khabib um, you, you do only get one mother and one father and it's just honoring the wishes of his mother and I cannot complain I mean I, I do wish he would have did one more uh, bout maybe against GSP or Conor McGregor but we have to honor his wishes or I would even say Charles Oliveira that would be nice so the next story I have this one is a very popular one 
Conor McGregor and his longtime friend Artem. So apparently, Artem um, gave Conor McGregor the idea of proper number 12 whiskey and helped, you know, found it or create it. And he's complaining that he's not getting his proper due. So he decided to sue Conor McGregor. And Conor McGregor apparently wants to fight him at SBG Concord at 10.30 p.m. at night. And apparently for the whole lot, you know. But going on with the updates, RTM hasn't responded to any of this. I guess he might just leave it with the lawyers because... To be real, if Conor McGregor and um, RTM were to duke it out, I feel I do feel Conor McGregor would win, even coming off of um, the losses Conor McGregor has suffered. I, I still have Conor McGregor, so uh, to a degree, I would see why RTM would leave this to the lawyers, and the lawyers or the attorneys are defending RTM nicely. They state, my client is retired professional fighter with a master's degree from DCU in finance and capital markets. We have issued high court proceedings on his behalf to enforce an agreement with McGregor regarding the proper number 12 whiskey brand. My client was the initial creator and co-founder for the concept to launch an Irish whiskey brand associated with the McGregor. As these matters are now before the court, we will not be making any further comment. Proper number 12 Irish whiskey was created, developed, and branded entirely promoted by Conor McGregor. Karen J. Kelsler said, RTM should have did better business-wise with Conor McGregor. I do have another quote from TalkSport. RTM stated the selling point of my book because apparently he's going to come out with a book soon um, detailing his proper number 12 whiskey story rtm states a few people know but this was actually my idea i was the person who came up with the idea to do a whiskey for connor i went on and met all different whiskey dis distilleries i called some and met some in person i did my research and put a beautiful deal together once the deal was ready, I went to Connor and I said, Connor, I have the deal ready for you. This is going to be a billion dollar deal. No messing here. I'm not sure if he took me seriously or not at the time with the billion dollars. Connor offered me one million, but I turned it down. I didn't accept it. You know, throughout my career, whenever I have helped Connor, Connor with camps, he offered to pay me four the camps but I never accepted money from him and this is where I feel RTM messed up I personally if I was in his position I would have been accepting money from Connor throughout the throughout the time um, because really it makes it seems it makes it seem like Connor was just using him for his ideas and his networking and his skills and then all of a sudden once he realizes how big this proper number 12 whiskey brand got apparently or all of a sudden now he wants to sue him it just makes RTM look bad but like I said if it was me I would have took the 1 million and any other money Connor offered throughout time when it came to these dealings with the brand and all of that. He probably didn't take the money because he probably would have felt he um, wouldn't be a proper friend or a business partner. But I, would, I definitely would have taken the money. I mean, he's definitely not hurting for money. So I definitely would have taken it. I'm curious is if you know if he's going to show up to the 
Fight 1030 yeah, SPG Concord. Yeah, I'm curious to see the follow up with that. But other than that, that is all the stories I have for tonight. We have some big, big stories here. We have Patty and his dealings with Jake Paul, Conor McGregor and his USADA dealings, Haspula jumping in trying to take out Henry Cejudo, Mr. Sonnen giving his opinion on John Jones, a person who he previously fought in UFC. Jerry speaks on his um, experience post vacating the title due to an injury and then Khabib giving his reason on why he won't come back from retirement and then Conor McGregor's legal dealing with his old friend because of money it's crazy how life works but other than that if you like the video like subscribe comment subscribe to both MMA news outlet channels or just or subscribe to one it's up to you I do have two different styles where I post just the clips from one video and just the video itself on the other channel it all depends on how you like to consume content or hit me up on Facebook if you like to if you're on there most of the time but regardless, thank you all for being here and showing me support after so long. And all the best and more news to come. Thank you all for listening. MMA News Outlet.